All right, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Oswing here. This is going to be your sit rep for Wednesday. It's 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas. It is, oh, uh, let's see here, March 30th, 2022. And so without further ado, let's hop over the board. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, bell for notifications. So as the events unfold, you will be getting the latest and greatest, at least from a sky perspective. Um, all right, so uh, starting out here in Skyglass, my favorite app. And just going to show you guys, uh, these are the NA birds. Uh, again, these are ones that don't want to be tracked, don't have call signs. Uh, and I just wanted to point out their locations. And notice it's the East Coast. East Coast only, really, for the most part. Everything else is over here. So there's something very interesting with that because I'm going to show you some more data points here in a second that are going to kind of tie into this uh, with the C-130s and the heavy lifts. Um, so I don't know, they're all working together. What do we have going on here on the East Coast that, that is being moved? Notice uh, there, a lot of them are coming out of Jacksonville Naval Air Station. Got some Pensacola moves uh, here, actually. Yeah, it's pretty, Just we'll just call it Pensacola. But this is uh, all the bases here in the, in the Panhandle. Uh, looks like those guys are up and about. And then East Coast, you know, we're talking uh, north of North Carolina. I think I got Hatteras out here. Uh, headed up towards Norfolk and uh, and onward. So um, not really sure what's going on there, but let's just keep on digging. And um, uh, currently up, we're showing 365. There's 538 military aircraft loaded at the moment. And uh, let me get over here. I'm going to show you what we have relative to uh, the heavies. We'll start here in the U.S. Uh, with the heavy lifts. Now, this is a good transition because we were just talking about East Coast is, is popping with all the NA flights. They don't want to be tracked. Again, uh, short C-130, you know, short movers. You know, these guys aren't uh, flying across the drink, right? A handful of C-17s, but mostly C-130 activity. So I don't know what's going on there. Uh, East Coast just seems to be the big focal point right now relative to NAs, relative to C-130s, and relative to tankers. And so here we go. Again, we've got uh, air refuelers up East Coast. You got them out over uh, Tampa right there uh, doing a little air refueling over Florida. Uh, but, yeah, you can see, I mean, this is that concentration again. So I don't know what's going on on the East Coast, but it is an interesting data point to say the least. Uh, again, you can see them doing some air refueling right there, taking off out of Tampa. Uh, and that's kind of over central Florida. And then right there, north of Jacksonville, uh, off the east coast of the Carolinas in Georgia, air refueling. So uh, that would indicate we've probably got a lot of fighters off the eastern seaboard right now. So just, uh, again, data point. Now let's get over to the U.S. watch list just to show you what we have from a spy bird perspective, really. Um, that's going to be your R-135 headed down south, just getting in over Texas. And we got an E-6 that's headed down over Florida. You can see that bad dude was running routes all the way up the East Coast. Again, running East Coast, and then you got some P-8s. You got a P-8 running off of, uh, looks like Savannah kind of area. Uh, and then you've got uh, one off of Cape Canaveral, Central Florida, which is, uh, that's going to be actually south of Cape Canaveral, it looks like. And so, um, again, just uh, data points. But uh, East Coast seems to be a very big focus point right now. And... Um, Lots and lots of activity East Coast wise. Now I know it's uh, 11 a.m. It's it's high noon on the East Coast, so that's kind of unusual. Normally we see this stuff spread out across the country. As you can see, that's not really the case. So, all right, let me turn those off. But you give you kind of a spread here on uh, all the aircraft up. Um, let's see, trainer wise. Let me just kind of move this out just a little bit. Text twos. Uh, we're sitting at like 40 texts. Uh, 19 T-38s. I don't know why they're not showing us text. So that's uh, we're at 60 trainers um, for the most part. It's kind of a light day. That's not really super heavy. Uh, three P-8s up and three P-3s or two P-3s. Sorry, those are going to be your sub hunters. And uh, we can take a look at those real fast. You can see again, <laughs> all East Coast. So what's going on on the East Coast that they are worried about? I don't know, but uh, just again. Seems to be the concentration of everything right now. So, all right, now let's break over here in Skyglass. Let's go look at Europe. 
just to see what we got going on now, uh, from the EU perspective, I want to just point out that these E3s, again, when they start doing that tight circle like that, you see that little halo looking thing? They're playing man in the middle. That is going to be basically doing cell tower data grabs, okay? They become the cell tower. Notice you've got three of them all doing the same thing over Europe right now. Why? What are they grabbing? Who's in Europe that they're trying to grab cell data on? I don't know, but uh, there's that little tight circle again right there. Even that one right over near the border. I don't know what the reach is on this. I know on a small aircraft like a PC-12, that reach can be... Uh, you know, about 20 miles or line of sight is what they call it. But uh, but then again, you can see the others. You got the 703s up, two 703s. That one's not really showing anything. Um, but uh, And then you got this Q4 that's out over kind of actually east of the Black Sea, which is uh, an interesting data point. Uh, again, that Q4's got some insane technology. He's looking all the way over. <laughs> uh, he's, he's across quite a bit there i mean he yeah he's stretching out into the middle east probably with uh with his range so all right so that's going to be that now let's get over here to the heavy lifts in the uk or in europe sorry uh just notice we're starting to spread out we're getting up there north of it i did hear finland is now getting engaged in this fight um or the fight that is to come and then uh, notice too we're, we're starting to get over here to the uh the other side near uh closer to the russian border uh and other side of east of turkey really um and then we've got uh, a lot of assets moving into the middle east but you can see that uh, little spaghetti chart there or spaghetti grid as i would call it nice and sloppy but that is where everything seems to be moving around and uh, you got them just spreading out assets across all these forward operating bases um and it looks like they are really getting ready to go to war honestly um uh, one thing and i'll show you as we get back into this let me minimize let me pull up uh, the TFRs real fast, and then we're going to start looking at the bases here in the U.S. I want to show you that the activity has slowed down quite a bit, which would indicate that we are already positioned, um, that we are, and, and, and the reason I'm concentrating on these C-130s, which are kind of the short haul birds, um, is because are they, you know, what are they moving? What are they moving across the East Coast right now? uh asset wise right what are they putting in place are they putting in missile defense systems or are they putting in troops uh what is it you know that's kind of the million dollar question uh but this whole east coast right now seems to be getting hammered in terms of air traffic today so uh this is a storm that just moved through you can see uh, the power outages and the blue boxes that are kind of coming ahead of it the wind through this one was brutal uh, but it rolled through about 2 a.m. and was kind of a non-event. Supposed to be a bunch of hail, not too much going on. But speaking of storms and weather, I want to get up here and just point out that this, oh, sorry, went a little too far. This right here, that is going to be HARP, all right? And notice that they do have, let me zoom in. You guys can see the HARP grid uh, as we get a little closer. I think you can. There it is. That's going to be your harp grid, all right? Those are the weather manipulation folks right there. Uh, I do find it interesting that we do have a TFR over top of them as a hazard. Um, probably is a hazard. I imagine if you flew an aircraft over that area, it would probably jack you all up with your electronics. But those are the boys that are out messing with the weather, um, and they look to be active right now. And so, um, and then this is going to be space operations, space operations, and then security up here in Alaska. It looks to be pretty, pretty busy up there. And then everything else is just kind of standard, right? Uh, this is a, uh, let me just see if that's still space ops, okay. And then we've got a lot of, this is space ops here. So we seem to be launching a lot of stuff into space at the moment. And air show, definitely an air show. And I think these are air shows in Charleston. Let me just, no, it's a security, security TFR in Charleston. That may explain why we have so much activity flying around right now in that general area. That is an air show there, but the security one, uh, like I said, man, the East Coast is hotter than a junkie spoon right now. So, all right. Now, one thing I want to point out yesterday, I thought this was an interesting data point. This is Air Force One that bugged out yesterday morning, uh, actually yesterday around 12 p.m., uh, took off at 12.08 and boogied way north uh, across, about halfway across the U.S., did a real long south track and then came all the way back, uh, landed about almost 6 p.m. last night. 
I don't know what was going on. There was no travel schedule for Flashbang. Um, this could have just been a drill or an exercise, you know, a bug out, you know, to, to get him airborne and, and into a safe location. But um, anyway, just thought that was an interesting data point that took place yesterday. So that one was up at the same time. Night Watch was up and we had an E6 in the same area right ahead of that. Um, and so it could have just been a drill doing a little exercise trying to get, uh, you know, prepared for what's coming. So, uh, but just a data point again, pointing that out, uh, so we can, uh, you know, so when it starts happening, we go, ah, yeah, we kind of saw that coming, didn't we? So, okay. This is actually flashbang schedule for today. Uh, not really much going on again, just beating this thing here into the ground. Uh, but we'll just move on because really not too much. This is just Beavis and Butthead getting together today. Um, looks like they're having lunch together in the private dining room. Can imagine the conversation between the two of them uh, has got to be very uh, stimulating, to say the least, right? All right. It's going to be our volcanic activity for today. You can see we've got about seven up right now. Um, was eight. We had one down here that just went off. But remember, these are only ash alerts. As you can see the little green boxes there. Uh, real light producers of ash, but uh, for aviation, that's just uh, something we pay attention to. Uh, again, uh, if these things decide to go hot and go big, um, that's your real climate change, okay? All right, uh, American military news, just want to point out that Shanghai is going into lockdown and they are already complaining about food shortages. <laughs> so uh, God. It just looks like the movie Outbreak. It's absolutely incredible that we are in this, living in this time. Absolutely crazy. But anyway, uh, food shortages, just keep in mind, man, they keep pumping it out. Now, why is that important? Let's get back over here to the Great Reset or uh, the plan, so to speak. Yeah, look right here in the middle. We've got uh, climate action failure. We have below that immigration, involuntary migration, sorry. Uh, but then we get over here to the right Bottom right, take a look at what that says. Energy price shock, All right? Financial failure, bottom left. You can see asset bubbles. Uh, we already kind of see that coming. That's uh, over in China. That's at the very bottom. Cyber attacks, left of center. Uh, information in infrastructure breakdown. Critical infrastructure failure. Water crisis. We haven't seen the water crisis piece, piece yet. Food crisis, right there, top left. Uh, and extreme weather. So these are kind of natural disasters. You can just kind of walk you through uh, the stuff that they are using to drive their, uh, their message home and bring their plan into full play, which is, of course, the new world order. All right. So, um, yeah, just uh, pointing those data points out just so you can see as we watch all this unfold, you kind of go, all right, uh, they're doing it. This is uh, no fuzz on it, right? So, yeah, conspiracy theory. I don't think so. All right. Now, here we go. Over to the drive. Just want to show you that uh, uh, they're talking about this. This is the war zone. Uh, peace negotiators reportedly hit with a chemical weapon attack. So I guess they were saying they got poisoned when they got together last time. Uh, they were all sickened uh, at the table, and it was just the Ukrainians. So uh, interesting data point again believe about half of what you read, but uh, nothing would surprise me more. The Russians do like to use this quite a bit in terms of poisoning people and taking people out via that method. So um, just an interesting data point. Again, uh, we'll keep our eye on it, but this is the kind of thing when they start to use the choice words of chemical weapons, bioweapons, things of that nature, what they're doing is basically greasing the skids for um, when they go into a country uh, and we start to get into the war, and this is kind of the driver. Remember, we would uh, uh, Saddam Hussein, weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons, all the other fun stuff, and we got over there, and it was all gone. Imagine that. So, uh, But these are the kind of trickery that they use or the word, word, uh, word games they play uh, to draw the general populace in to thinking that we can justify why we're going to war because we know that is not far off, okay? All right, now, speaking of putting quarters in the machine, I just wanted to point out, uh, this is also over on the drive, UK uh, is now providing 6,000, all right, uh, but yeah, this is basically 10,000 in-laws now, Javelin missiles already supplied into there. So 
This is what we're looking at, shoulder fired. If you guys are familiar with the javelins, these are called uh, man pads or star streak. And uh, the UK is basically pumping them into the region. And so it's, again, we're just feeding the machine. It's going to be ongoing. This is one of those deals that uh, we're going to have to, uh, you know, you can't really back out of this. I mean, we're putting so much stuff in. These weapons are going to be used for sure to try and keep Ukraine kind of alive and in the game. Now, I think where it's going to get really interesting is if this thing goes hot um, in the region, uh, Poland's probably going to be the first area of attack because they're the ones that are kind of the forerunners. And then UK is not off the table uh, just because they are really feeding that as well as U.S. So um, this is going to be really interesting as the dynamics start to change after that meeting with NATO. These guys are now probably going to start jockeying. Like I said, I'll show you the base activity. There's not a lot leaving the U.S. right now. So, okay. Now, speaking of economy, and remember, war is an economy. Germany is scrambling now to ration gas after uh, they're refusing to make payments in rubles, right? Because now uh, the petrodollar has been pretty much shut off for them if they want their gas. Who 57% of the U.K. or actually Europe gets their gas from Russia. And so uh, Russia is now saying, hey, if you want my gas, you're going to pay me in rubles. They're saying they're not going to do it. And so now they're having to ration gas in Germany. Um, and that's why you have the war machine. That's why the UK is pumping, uh, you know, sending in um, uh, all of the, uh, uh, you know, war machine stuff, right? That's why they're sending in the equipment. That's, it's, it's all sales, right? That's why the U.S. is sending equipment into them as well. So anyway, okay, let's move on. Uh, looking at cyber tax, just kind of give you a, an idea of what's going on today. Looks a little busy, as you can see. Uh, U.S. is actually the uh, top number three, actually number one in the top three in terms of attacks. Uh, 3.79 million attacks coming out uh, of the United States. And, of course, 2.3 billion coming in to the United States. So we are just getting hammered over here. Most of those attacks are going to be intrusion. That means they're getting into uh, systems and malware, uh, 17 million malware um, attacks. So kind of give you an idea, that looks to be kind of a normal day. Uh, it's kind of wild when you really look at it all. And then, of course, these are the other side of the attacks uh, on the cyber attack, attack map. Uh, but you can see stuff coming out of the U.S. We kind of seem to be hitting ourselves. Everybody does, really. It's kind of a wild, wild how all this stuff works. But uh, 25 million attacks just today alone. And uh, everybody seems to be volleying. So we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, if things get really, really bad, you're going to see a big uptick in this uh, on these cyber maps, okay? Okay, now over here to the Black Sea, I just want to show you the, <laughs> the flow of goods is still there. Green is cargo, red is oil, all right? And it uh, looks like everything's rolling in. This is Russia over here, Crimea here. Uh, one of the things uh, that I read just a little while ago was that uh, Russia is starting to drop mines in the Black Sea. That's going to clear a lot of people out. Uh, somebody hits a mine and, and it's, that's going to be pretty bad. So hopefully it's not a, a cargo ship. Probably don't have any passenger ships in here now, but, or an oil ship, uh, hits one of these mines and then you got a pretty bad mess on your hands, um, from a, a climate issue. Okay. So, but just want to point that out, but it's pretty busy, pretty busy. It doesn't look like anybody's being hindered in terms of the flow of goods from, you know, getting into Russia right now. All right, Biggs Army Airfield. Remember, now this was our core operating location out of the United States for supporting both Asia and Europe and the Middle East. And this board has been blank. If I go back and I look at the days, uh, we have no camper flights. We have no Omni flights. We have nothing. Uh, just nothing there. Monday, Tuesday, and then today. This is just a blank, blank slate. So, uh, it looks to me like we are pre-positioned. Everybody is in play that's going to be in play. And all we got to do is um, somebody put the catalyst in that uh, takes us to the next level, which is game on. All right, here's your Omni flights. Again, unusual. Nothing on the board. Don't see that very often. All right, I did see one earlier this morning coming back, it looked like, from uh, Asia. But uh, it's already since landed here in the U.S. But... Um, Nothing on there. Kind of strange. Uh, and then we get over here. This is actually going to be U.S. Transportation Camber Flights. Blank. Again, 
The, that's your troop movers. Nothing up. All right. Look at the UK. UK's got five up right now. It looks like they're just mainly moving assets between the UK into uh, kind of Poland and, and um, you know, Bulgaria, Hungary, that kind of area. So they've been kind of running back and forth. But there's just a handful. It's not the craziness that we have seen, um, which would indicate to me that everybody is pre-positioned, right? Assets are in play. Uh, they're ready for this thing to go hot, okay? All right, now this is going to be the Soviet Special Detachment. I had one flight up this morning, and that was Putin himself. And uh, just to show you, nothing on the board with them either. Uh, but this is actually RD, RSD-71, uh, and this is his plane. It looks like he basically took off from uh, downtown Moscow, uh, and then flew into this little area here, and I don't really know what that is because I don't, I don't get it. But uh, that would be the airport. That's a run, that's a runway right there. Um, but yeah, looks like he moved to another location today. No telling uh, what that is. That could be like his Camp David, you know, local. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to show you that just happened, and um, I've been tracking his flights, and that is uh, first movement he's made in probably about two weeks so all right now here is <laughs> this is your machine right here and again notice everything looks to be really south of the border today um i'm not sure what they're doing here are they going to pick up some folks are they bringing folks in what is the deal but look at all the flight activity is for the most part south of the border okay that's important because we're gonna talk about that Check this little jewel out here. The U.S.-Mexico secret deal allowed 35 Russians to enter the U.S. Now, that took place just a couple weeks ago. Now, uh, actually, uh, the night of March 20th, so 10 days ago. Now, you may remember last week I was talking about um, this guy right here, Secretary of Homeland Security, took a trip down to Mexico City. You may remember we tracked that flight about 10 days ago. Um, and uh, evidently that was probably was tied to it because these guys were actually all sitting on one side of the border and the Mexican officials worked the deal, brokered a deal with the U.S. to let them and get them into our country. And so, uh, but here we are, uh, just, just pointing this out, I will show you. Uh, you will notice that there is no evidence on the board <laughs> of a flight to Mexico City. So... Yeah, the government has, uh, they've gone in and basically scrubbed the board and removed that flight. And so uh, somewhere between the 18th and the 21st was where that flight had actually taken place. Uh, remember, it was down there in Mexico City, and it is no longer uh, on the board. So the, um, yeah. All right, secret it is. Now, also just want to point out, we looked at this the other day. You know, we're hearing about this is the big driver. Oh, it's all about the unaccompanied or accompanied minors uh, that show up at our border. Sorry, this is the unaccompanied minors, and uh, this is the accompanied, uh, which are usually showing up with non-family members, okay? Uh, but this is the driver right here, and these are single adults coming in, uh, mostly uh, males, under the age of 25, military age males coming into our country. And uh, this number ought to alarm everybody. We're at 703,000 um, single adult encounters coming to the border this year so far, and it is only month number three. So we're on track to, uh, to pretty much bump that up here in the two million range. Now, from my understanding, they actually have about a million, uh, they have eyes on about a million people on the other side of our borders from California all the way to Texas that are waiting uh, for this, this new policy, Title 42, I think it is, to let them into our country. And that is going to drop at the end of this month. So we got one more day and then it could be a total chaos at the border. Okay. All right. Now let's get over here. This is kind of the cool thing. I just wanted to show this again. I, <laughs> I don't know what it is about this website. But it is just wild when you really kind of start digging in on it. This is the space stuff. It's not just junk and debris. It is everything. Satellites. But I just want to show you. I thought this was really cool. These 
are your Starlinks. Look at them running around. It's almost like a belt running around. That's Starlink satellites. And you can find them. They're all over the place. Uh, but that's just one string. This is other satellites running across. These little red objects are just, that's space junk, right? And remember, that space junk is moving at like 17,000 miles an hour. So, uh, so when you're putting something into orbit and you hit something like space junk or debris that's traveling 17,000 miles an hour, um, yeah, kind of like that movie Gravity, right? Pretty wild. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this again. It's just cool. It's just a really cool tool, and I love just uh, kind of looking at it from time to time. So, uh, but yeah, this this whole this whole Starlink thing I thought was really interesting. How these things are just positioned and, and rolling rolling around uh, around the planet. So, okay, let's get back over here to this uh, Open ADSB Exchange. Just see if we've got anything that catches my eye. Again, East Coast seems to be hopping. We'll keep our eye on it. That's going to be one of your E6s. Uh, that's the one that we just had come down over Florida and come back up. Just seems to be running that East Coast route. East Coast seems to be the focus, folks. I don't know what's going on there, uh, but they look to be moving short-haul assets with C-130s. Uh, don't know if it's troops, if it's National Guard. I don't know. Really don't know, um, but we'll keep our eye on it. Uh, but that seems to be really all of the focus today is East Coast. So... All right, listen, that is going to be it for our sit rep today. You guys uh, keep your powder dry and uh, stay frosty because um, I think we, after this NATO meeting, uh, just watching how everything seems to be really slowing down in terms of movement um, uh, would be a pretty good indicator that everything is set, uh, uh, i.e. the stage is set. And uh, something is going to trigger this and it's going to go hot. I, that would be my... Just looking at it, watching it, and what's been happening over this, the last two months, um, that would probably be a pretty good indicator. Okay. So, all right, listen, that's going to be it. You guys be safe out there. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.